right, let's go. So this is Professions and Their Future Impact on World of Warcraft by Bellular. Again, this is a clip of 25 minutes. Jesus fuck. Um, I don't know when I'm going to sleep today. I Fuck, man, this is going to be a while. All right. It's going to be rough. <laughs> it's gonna be... Uh, I think I might go to sleep by right after this. What has happened here? Uh, okay, so leveling up crafting. So there are. Oh, 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 yep. Yep. Huh? Yes, how will one become more adept at crafting? Permanent forms of improvement slash progression. First is improving your overall profession skill. So that's just your yeah. skill number. Uh, if you've maxed out blacksmithing skill, for instance, you will craft everything better than if you've only halfway leveled through your profession. Hmm. Getting better gear for your profession through. Uh, higher skill and or other profession stats on gear because of course there is crafting gear with stats which is pretty yeah. cool specialization of your profession which is the largest source of improvement the more you specialize in more ways that uh, help given recipe the larger bonus uh, skill you will get towards that recipe thus uh, giving you a higher quality that uh, you'll be able to make it at and there's a lot to this system that uh, I guess they're just not uh, really prepared to High reveal quality. to us just yet. Yeah. Item there's level lots basically. of ways to earn specialization points, and uh, doing so will be necessary to excel in your profession. Some of these sources can only be done once, others are repeatable. And this is great, we actually have some examples. Right, making recipes for the first time. Certain discoveries in the world. An old book, sh a book on a shelf could be about out. How much you want to bet this part is not going to be in the game? The one-time sources could be, but making recipes for the first time, which is fine, but certain discoveries in the world, an old book on a bookshelf about alchemy, an old buried tablet, a hermit scribe in a cave, etc. These will not be things. It would be in forms of quests, special quests, sure, and completing certain profession achievements might, uh, which is probably like the stars. Yeah. Alchemy, an old buried tablet, that sort of thing. Yes, just uh, just find a way to make this not show up on handy notes, please. <laughs> uh, There's no way. Quests. Of course it would be. <clears throat> it's uh, not even going to be in the game, to uh, be honest. Achievements, like uh, crafting your first max quality uh, item. So basically just a like, grab bag of stuff to do, which I think uh, could actually end up feeling quite satisfying. Yeah, sure. Not really. So repeatables then, which are helping factions. and uh, The NPCs. only way this can be satisfying is if professions are going to be as good content as anything else in the game. Not saying that the content in the game is good, but it's like it would have to compete with stuff like mythic rating and stuff. So this whole like finding certain things in the world will definitely be on Tomcats or whatever. Uh as like treasures or whatever, like checkpoints on the map that you go, you grab and whatever. It would be more of a completionist thing and that's fine. But the only way for this to be fun and not like be annoying as fuck First of all, the main problem with profession is you can only have two. So that's already sucks, right? If you want multiple professions, you need to have multiple characters. In my opinion, arbitrary uh, restriction for no reason. Like, you, you, why, why not just specialize in all professions? I mean, you have the time. There's no reason not to. It's a very old way of thinking, in my opinion. Just unlock so you can make all the professions on one character and make everything that is bind and pickup be account bound so you can send it to your alts or stuff like that. Uh, second thing is um, if the professions can't compete with any sort of loot, there's really no reason to have the professions. They tried it with, uh, what's it called, with uh, in BFA <sighs> to craft le like legs. First of all, you could only use one profession item per character. Like if you wear the profession legs, you can't wear the other one or something like that. There was some restriction on like how much uh, equipment you, I think it was maybe for gems, not so much for the gear. But again, why? Um, the other thing is that to make, let's say the pants, that was like a competing item level was just like you needed way too many mats from the mythic raid by the time you craft it literally like the that week or next week you're gonna have a replacement so it wasn't even worth the effort you couldn't sell it it was buy and pick up it wasn't worth the effort uh, because you could find a replacement and it wasn't even like 
best in slot even if you did find like if you, if you did craft it, it's not like you will replace it right away it's like it was sold garbage it was just not relevant content in the world and fulfilling crafting orders for others yeah sure that's of course the player to player system now uh ways to become more adept uh and have a better outcome each time you craft so the what we just talked about is like the high end level for you as a crafter with that profession but I suppose this is for the actual craft that you're making. So you Okay, so using higher quality reagent in your recipe, that's that might be new. I don't know what a higher quality reagent means. It's like like high quality kind of like in Final Fantasy. I doubt they want to go that route, but we'll see. Using higher quality reagents. First way to get them to be better. Using a new type of consumable reagent that they are calling finishing reagents. These yeah, pay to give win. you bonuses <laughs> while you kidding. craft the recipe, and some of them can directly improve your skill, therefore quality when used. An example might be a blacksmith using a special quenching oil, or a jewel crafter using a special polishing cloth while cutting gems. Hmm. Right, interesting. So I suppose you can uh, you can plug those in when you want. Which yeah, there's a few ways that could all be yeah, quite like for player economy. It's fairly difficult to get a grasp on this whenever it's so. Um, speculative mm. and like we have we literally have no like frame of reference for this but it all sounds like really kind of putting cynicism aside for a second it sounds like they actually are went, have went and designed a whole big profession system you're going to be able to play with it actually spend time and think about it and stuff like that as opposed to yeah. the current existence of them very nice yeah so far i like what i'm hearing totally yeah for sure uh, some sure. crafting stats can improve see again it's nice on paper how relevant is this going to be just because it's nice on paper, it's like, oh, this is like looks like a more intrinsic and more thought of system than what we have now. Yeah, sure. Is this gonna be relevant though? We will need to do it. Aside from alchemy and enchanting, there, the, all the professions are kind of dog shit. Literally, money sinks to create the legendaries, but because there's so much competition, you barely even make profit on the legendary unless you can actually collect the material as well, which is a, another pain in the ass the resulting crafted item uh, one of the stats is inspiration the more inspiration you have the better chance to be inspired while crafting getting some bonus skill to be applied to the outcome basically a critical hit when you're crafting uh, while we want the system to none of this is going to be in the game <laughs> none of this is going to be in the game be largely about long-term progression and opt-in bonuses inspiration provides a form of opt-in randomness if you choose to specialize or gear towards inspiration, you may be able to craft something at a higher quality than your current level of progression would otherwise allow. The idea is to allow some additional excitement uh, to you know, give you some of those variable outcomes, but it's never required for you to be able to make uh, things at the highest level of quality. So basically yeah. it seems the highest level of quality is always something that you can just work towards and will 100% of the time get. But if you have a fuckload of inspiration, Every now and then, you could kind of get there a bit earlier. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, uh, yeah, sounds quite all to me. sounds fine. I can I can already see how people will be thinking about, you know, the pros and the cons for this. I think from a, a sort of fantastical thing, sure, fine, works. Yeah. Uh, from a game system side of, of things, I think it is good that it seems that inspiration. Well. It's like, is inspiration a stat that then once you have fully maxed a particular craft, inspiration is no longer required? Well, because there's... Yeah. well, that is one thing. It's like also, how hard is it really to max out your craft? You just go to wowprofessions.com or whatever the site is and just figure out how many materials you need to craft to get to max level on your crafting and to the highest quality. And then it doesn't even matter if there's inspiration or not. So now you would not even spec into inspiration. And then the inspiration system will just, it's going to be abandoned right after. Uh, the other thing is, if you are able to eventually craft the highest level regardless, it's just going to be a bit longer. First of all, how long will it take to get there? Is inspiration going to be a massive boon or is it just a small boon? If it's a small boon, it's not that relevant. If it's a massive boon, it will feel more punishing when people are not getting it. It's yeah. going to be a maximum level of quality. Yeah, well, that's a thing where if you think about obviously. FF for a second, because it obviously is uh, craftsmanship and control. Yeah, control is like the stat where what you because it's deterministic, not always deterministic. There's randomness in your actual skill of how you're doing it, but 
you there is like a point where you know I can definitely get this a hundred percent of the time if I have these stats. Some of that requires yeah. you to like fully bis and always use quality regions, but that's the thing where you can absolutely always just go. Yeah. No, that never. No, fully bis maybe, but honestly, as long as your control and your uh, what's the other one. There's control and then the, there's two stats you know, that you really care about. It's control and something. You need them above a certain level as well as having your CP or whatever it's called above a, at a certain uh, amount. And then it, it's like your macro will do it at 100% high quality every time. Uh, it's really not a, much of a gamble. And I, uh, you, I don't really think you need BIS for that at all. You will de you're definitely able to you're not at the mercy of randomness unless i was crafting highest item level stuff you could in shadow bringers at least without being like, this not even close to this largely for um all that stuff so i imagine i imagine they know this they're not gonna yeah. go you can only make your <sighs> to make the best none of this is getting into the game by the way really no way to do that. i think so i mean i know ff crafting is of rng but it's like you could outgear that as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, because like you could just crafting macros, right? Which kind of require the RNG to be, you know, it's to work. Obviously. No, no, no. They take RNG into account largely, or they ignore RNG elements. No, it's not RNG at all. Okay. That's the thing where it's like, also you can like not. It's just a hundred percent. Macros, you can kind of, you can always go, yeah. Here's, here's, here's what will work in the worst case, mm. and you macro that. Basically. And you press that, and it always works. Or you can do it like off the cuff and react to rng and make it better but it's like that's basically it mm, gotcha that's basically it so next then optional reagents which are a bit different. yeah the if you if you're gonna bet on rng in final fantasy first of all waste of materials but second of all you'll have to do it manually you can't macro into rng because right now you just put them in and that's that well yeah. using most optional reagents increases the difficulty of a craft thus uh, requiring a higher skill to craft of a high quality but using most optional re okay. conversely if you choose to use an optional reagent that, for instance, lowers the item level of the item you're crafting, it will actually lower the difficulty of the recipe and make it easier to craft at a high quality. So, all seems kind of cool to me. I'm excited to see how this pans out, and I imagine it they'll won't. start to do, like, kind of breakdown blogs at some point. Yeah. Uh, there are some other things, though. So, profession gear. What kind of sources could we expect from progression gear? Uh, Profesh well, progression. It's not all designed. You will certainly be able to craft gear with lots of cross-profession crafting wear natural. Blacksmiths crafting mining picks and needles for tailoring is an example, and basically they are excited about the sort of cross-profession or profession thing, which all this makes sense. So We're excited for this kind of cross-profession interaction, particularly because it means someone could choose to be more of a supporter within their profession. No one gives a shit about this. If it will sell for money, they will do it. If it won't, they won't. Specializing in crafting gear for various professions, reagents for others of their professions, etc., depending on the profession. You know when this would matter, the cross-profession interaction? It would matter if you could actually use multiple professions, more than two. That's when it would matter. So, good. Now, the inspiration style. Let's talk a bit more about that. So... You all, this is a question. So you also. But gain... here's the dumb thing. If they're like, well, we only want you to um, be proficient with one profession because it would make sense that a blacksmith devoted his life's craft to be a blacksmith. Okay. How come I can just remove it from my memory? Just like erase from my memory and then learn another one. And when I master that one, if I delete that and go back to being a blacksmith, I have to start all over again. Doesn't make. It doesn't compute. I mean, I should be. At the level where I was, because like, how can I just forget? But now I'm remembering. It's like, what? These stats passively alongside your gear. Then I thought it was only going to be part of your gear, much like how crit or haste works. Gear will definitely be a big source of these stats. Certain choices within your profession specialization will allow you to get some of these stats. Here's another thing. They're gonna add this gear to the professions, right? And with certain stats. How much space do you have in your bags right now with all the gear for all the specs that you already have? With uh, one set for uh, AoE, one set for uh, single target, one set for healer, one set for uh, mythic plus healer, and one set for uh, raid healing. And then you have tank, and that, that one has like one set for uh, 
AOE tank, one set for single target tank, like boss tanks and stuff like that. Then you have your PvP set for your healer, and then PvP set for your DPS. How many? How much room are you gonna have in your bags after all of this? And also holding reagents and consumables and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're not gonna have any fucking room. There will likely be other sources as well, and chance consumables, etc. Hmm. Consumables. So really, consumables. What does that mean? Cross profession. And it shows they're really trying to make this like more and more and more of a thing. Yeah, well, it probably also means you know here's your here's your crafting flask. Yeah. Here's your blacksmith flask an alchemist can make. So you, you know, if you have an alchemist friend, they'll make you a blacksmith flask, or buy it off the auction house, and then it'll mean you take that and then craft for like two or three hours. Yeah. Something like that, probably. I imagine so. Yeah, I stuff imagine. that just kind of like really keeps that economy going. Um, yeah, which obviously, uh, you know, there's been, I think there's been a little bit of a mixed bag to that based on the combat consumables for Shadowlands. Because I think everyone's like, oh yeah, you put sharpening stones and oils in? Okay. Now I'm like, yeah, they're back. Like, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. In the, in the like, ultimate outcome of them, at least. Yeah, we'll see. Now, is there a deterministic way to gain inspiration or is it RNG? Being inspired and gaining the bonus skill is RNG, and that RNG is based on your inspiration stat. Basically, it's a bit like how the more crit rating you have, the more you have a chance of critting. As I mentioned above, there are lots of ways to opt into gaining the inspiration stat if you want it. So they're pretty much trying to design around the downsides. We'll have to see if it works. Item quality then. What is the benefit to crafting a lower item level item at a higher quality? Yeah, good question. Uh, okay, so here's the answer. Sorry in general, I just wanted to note that optional reagents can raise or lower the difficulty depending on the effect of the recipe. The example I mentioned there is no benefit. would be if we made an optional reagent like the Novice Crafter's Mark from Shadowlands, which lowers the required item level uh, from 60 to 50 and lowers the eye level from 151 to 87. Just to be clear though, the introduction of quality along with profession stats is for Dragonflight recipes specifically. I'm just using the crafters, uh, the novice mark to illustrate an example. So, so yeah. there is no point. Kind of interesting, I suppose. Maybe it could be useful for like as you scale up or um, kind of get more reps into a recipe where you don't want to craft like loads of high difficulty badly maybe you'll scale up faster if you craft low difficulty to good quality yeah i mean that's yeah. just about always kind of trying Got to bitten by mosquitoes like today to at work kind of. yeah well that's the thing that's and a yes. good way to have the same recipe work in multiple different points of your skill by increasing the quality level as yeah. opposed to you know um having to go get like harder reagents and stuff like that it's like oh i've got a whole load of the basic stuff i'll just work through them but they're still not they're not completely pointless yeah. So it's like it's not. Yeah, it would just be maybe maybe useful. But no. Yeah. For some other things then. So the optional reagents, they will be a bit more like the nine point two optional reagents in that it's just a little bit more custom and interesting than just setting stats. So that's good and important. As for the inspiration stat, that will not be a secondary stat. It won't be a normal gear. It will exist on profession gear and in other areas of the profession system. And remember, profession gear is something you automatically swap into. There's like, doesn't seem like there's really any management that the player has to do there. Right. Okay, so it doesn't go to your back. Of, uh, having more professions on a character. Maybe. Something they've discussed. Currently, no plans. Uh, that said, after Dragonflight. <laughs> this, this system is so not happening. There's no fucking way. Unless they're delaying Dragonflight to like 2024 <laughs> or like end of 23, this profession system is not going live. Right. We all might feel very different about multiple professions as this is going to be an all new experience. So basically it's a, uh, you know, wait now, we'll see. Of course, in FF14, you can do all of... Yeah, it feels with these. Okay. Speaking of cross-profession interaction, is there any possibility to increase the number of professions that can be learned by one character? Uh, I that lots of people see value in increasing the number of professions learned by a single player and something we have definitely discussed. Currently, we have no plans to expand this number. Yep. So, yeah, professions are still going to be dog shit. All of them in one character, but of course you can play every job in one character because the idea of character and class, to sort of use the WoW analog, is uh, is way more loose. Your character could be any class. Yeah. And which therefore is... any profession, which means you can do the entire game's content in one character. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Which makes more sense considering the amount of MSQ and stuff. It's not, a, yeah. it's not an alt-friendly game for alt characters, but you can do it if you want one character so you don't need one. Yeah. That kind of thing. Whereas, oh. definitely, Basically. Like, it's weird. I, yeah, if I played this game, I would be kind of annoyed if I couldn't have more than just 
two perfections, but also I'm like, eh, I can see how it adds to identity. I can see how it used to add to identity. Because I used to have used always, to like, I didn't, I have to say, I didn't. Fuck, I can't speak. It's Please. such an old school mentality. I used to have always, like, aspects of identity to my characters in terms of what they could do. But that's no. when the content uh, made sense of it. That's when like, I now. remember being, you know, a uh, herbalist and alchemy on my druid when I was a, a very, very young person. Uh, I remember my... Um, I'm pretty uh, sure name. since... I believe since playing Wrath of the Lich King, I always thought I should have more than two options for professions. Even then. Because it doesn't make any sense to not be able to craft more. Like... <sighs> It legit doesn't. Like, you level professions to max within, like, a few hours. Just buy everything on the auction house and just level it. It's not like it's your life's work to be this. And it's not like you can be the best uh, blacksmith. It's not like you have... Uh, there's this legendary blacksmith quest or some shit like that. There's absolutely nothing. It's not like you meet, like, you know, the master and he's going to teach you secret recipes. Or, like, there's nothing that makes it feel like this is a lifelong profession that, like, you can't concentrate on other professions while doing this. Which also, by the way, is total bullshit. Because why can I do blacksmithing and tailoring, for example? Because I can do mining in between. Why, why can a blacksmith not mine automatically? Why is that, like, another full-on profession? A blacksmith should automatically be able to mine. And gather herbs. I mean, he's dealing with stone anyways. He should be able to know how to mine the stone, right? Doesn't make sense. Uh, how about an alchemist? How come an alchemist can't just pick up flowers? He knows what the flowers are for. He's the alchemist. So just going into the world and picking up flowers. Why is that a different profession? Same with inscription, right? It's all flowers as well. You make ink out of them. You know which flowers you need to make which ink. So why not go and pick up the flowers? Right? Then uh, what else do you have? Um, let's see. What? Um, leatherworking. How can a leather worker not know how to skin? Right? Like he's a leather worker. He works with skin. He should know how to skin the, like, the piece of the monsters he needs in order to create the leather right it's like you know it's it's so weird tailoring is the one only one that makes sense because you get cloth off of mobs you don't like kill for cloth so like literally tailoring enchanting is one of the easiest combinations to do you don't really need tailoring because they remove the enchanting from tailoring but it's like as far as professions go because they're standalone professions all you got to do is kill mobs so you can be a tailor and enchanter but you can't be a blacksmith and anything else Right? Why can't I be a blacksmith and an engineer? Clearly, I know how to work stone. Like, it doesn't make sense, man. Before she was lightforged, running around Legion with a fell slit in her arm because she was, uh, was mining the blacksmith. Yeah. So that's what she did for that time. And that's what it was. But now, like, because that's ca because that part of the game has fallen away so much in favor of, like, the gameplay focus, at least as far as I'm concerned, all my characters are engineers for the Shadowlands wormhole. So that's same. Kind of, that's the kind of thing. Same. Where I think they need to find ways to marry that, like identity. So engineering is just way too valuable. You get the movement speed boost. You get the gliders, right? So it's just way too valuable to not be an engineer. Like it just helps you so much. And then enchanting, if you want to make some uh, easy money, because uh, just disenchanting stuff you don't need is so much gold at the beginning of expansion. And uh, what's it called? Or the other one is alchemy to get double, um, what do you call it? First of all, alchemy is like the elixirs. Elixirs are going to cost a lot at the beginning of an expansion. So that's a good money grab. And the other thing is um, your your elixirs last twice as long. Though honestly, once there's a guild, uh, uh, what do you call it? A guild pot, whatever, that you can get flasks from, you already don't need alchemy at that point. So it's kind of like whatever of what the class does and how it feels to be like oh this character has that while also removing the feeling of just going well i'm going to be engineer for the wormhole and alchemist for the uh the for oh the wormhole from engineering too i think that's one of the things is you maybe maybe they know to avoid that a little bit but 
it'd certainly be nice to have less limits overall so people don't feel arbitrarily forced to do pref another alt for perfecting content. That's a, it's a difficult one. It's yeah. a difficult one. And the thing is, like, if the professions are not competing with main content anyways, or, like, barely, who cares if it, like, you can be all of them? Like, it does, like, man, like, it just doesn't make any sense. For some of the things, uh, for the Dark Moon Fair, uh, basically nothing to say other than something like updating the Dark Moon Fair quests could go very well with the overall update. Uh, oh, professions nice. in group content then, right? You know, uh, yeah, just saying. The huge folks in group content has worries for me. Uh, you know, could this be like a fantastic end game? You know, alternate end game for people. Hmm. So here's the here's the response. It's tricky to thread the needle in this one because we want to reward players for doing group content. Instances are a major part of the game. Professions are meant to span pretty much every part of it. We also recognize that, as you say, uh, they're a great place for those less interested in group content to find loads of gameplay. Given that one of our general goals for professions is a player can be very successful without needing to set foot in an instance, uh, right? We recognize that just because you want when, to craft when a dragon they ever need to. onto an epic uh, helmet, you don't necessarily want to go and slay that dragon. Those are two distinct fantasies, and splitting those activities has a great deal of value. This is particularly because we want you to be able to think of yourself first and foremost as a scribe, a leather worker, or any other profession. For some players, uh, ideally, their professions should be uh, able to be the most important part uh, you know, of, of their industry. Identity. They choose to spend the majority of their energy. Given that, they're discussing how to achieve both of those goals, of having group content be rewarding to a player with professions, and also having it be kind of uh, avoiding that to be required to be successful in your profession. You will absolutely be able to max out your profession skills and very successfully specialize without setting foot in an instance. It's possible that, possible, though, that some recipes will still come from dungeons or raids. So, so. interesting... I guess active. maybe you can do it in the uh, prime some auction system. The work order system being able to take BOP uh, items yeah. will help them get around some of these issues too. Yeah, that'll like that's the thing where recipes will be like a forever problem on that front. But in terms yeah. of the materials, that's the big the big solution there. Absolutely, and that's what that's <sighs> why I think the work orders is such like a smart thing. It's such a really creative. I really hate the how they do professions and well. At the same time, I do think there's. It's just so useless. Almost like the. Uh, Incentive. You literally take professions for quality of life at this point, or just money making. There's no like, and money making is like chanting basically and uh, alchemy. There's really nothing to gain from professions. Well, even now with the legendaries, first of all, it costs a fortune to get to the point where you can craft the best legendary. And while you can craft, when you can craft it, you're barely getting any money back for that. The the ingredients cost about the same, if not more, than the legendary craft. Advising players to step outside the so dungeons, dumb. I think, is something that the game really needs to keep in mind a lot of the time. Which is, oh, you're afraid of group content? Well, we've put a really fucking delicious card at the end of it for you specifically. Do you want to give it a try? And the people go, fuck it, sure. That is tends to go wrong, I think, in modern World of Warcraft in a lot of ways. With M plus, yeah. Yeah, but I think yeah. To a new player. yeah, but I think there's definitely cases where that should they should keep that in mind as a possible tool. Instead yeah. of going, Oh no, you're allowed to live in your little crafting bubble. I think that's okay. But people should be encouraged to step out of it every once in a while for a, for a more healthy cross progression game. And I'm definitely saying this a little bit from the perspective of um I guess it's just the I'm thinking about like transmog. And specifically, I'm thinking about Glam and FF, where I know people who are like, well, I don't know them personally, but I've seen people who are like, oh, I have to fucking go and try to find a party for that ultimate just so I can get that weapon because I really want that weapon because I really want to look cool. Like, they don't really care too much about doing the content. They want the actual appearance from it. Yeah, so that's fine. to go out of the way and do it, even though they're not like naturally inclined. Yeah. They're not sweaty, hardcore raiders. But they're willing to try that because they want the shiny weapon. Yeah, of course. I think that's um. And shiny weapon stays forever. Fucking, uh, buy boosts and shit sometimes for that. <gasps> that's why not every you said the word. Yeah, that's you why. Said I the word, Matt. Yeah. Oh, no boosts. Yeah, that's a small part of my. The B word. Legends you find are fucking useless. That is why. Yeah. Crafter of this blue post. Yeah. You should have just said easy, just boost. Just boost. And then. I mean that's post, a problem, yeah. And then post the link. To Mike Yabara's guild. <laughs> just, exactly. just boost. Easy. I know a guy. 
just yeah. Like, that's it, Bob. It's like, yeah, don't don't turn around and put this behind, you know, oh, if you need cutting edge to get this recipe, <laughs> don't do that. They won't. Yeah, but if it's uh, like, but if it's <laughs> like, kill, you know, get uh, ahead of the curve LFR version. Kill, kill it, emboss an LFR. Something oh, Jesus, oh, man, that's now that's rough content. But it's still... Now, right. you tell me it's normal, and we could be talking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the thing where I think they'll they never put it behind the normal, I don't think. Even the put an LFR, LFR of the last boss comes out like two months after the raid release or some shit. It doesn't even matter. So that means the the worthiness of the recipe will go down so much. It's the people who would get it on normal or heroic on the first week or two that will actually make the bank out of the recipe. After that, it's like completionist because like you're not going to make money on the recipe if it's even a useful recipe. It doesn't matter. If they wanted people to it's have on it. LFR. If they wanted crafter only people to have Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm just fucking there. around with yeah, how yeah, normal's yeah. easier than LFR sometimes. Yeah, that sure. said, I've people say that to me all the time. I'm sure I believe them. I haven't done LFR in a long LFR's time. LFR's a fucking nimmer. I'm sure. It's a bit like how, uh, wasn't it at that time Preach found that, like, normal mode was just the worst place to be in? Did it? Because it was, like, insane fucking goddard land. Yeah, that's the thing where, uh, it's not about how difficult, okay, if difficulty is not a problem to you, the player, mm. then because it's a group content, the difficulty is, you know, it's a group difficulty check, not an individual difficulty check. Yeah. And people who are in Heroic are more likely to be better players yeah. than people who are normal. Yeah. Which means heroic is easier than normal. They, th that's how it works. It's all madness. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking mad, but that's how it works. Yeah, okay, old recipes. To an extent, Basically, yeah. there's value in something like that for the work order system. Mm -hmm. For right now, work orders are for Dragonflight. Makes mm -hmm. sense. For crafting inventory, they're aware that inventory space is an issue and they're currently looking into what they're, they could. Please! Please! Give us a materials bag. Oh, that would be great. We need... Uh, we oh, man. Just imagine you have... Infinite like, uh, material bag. That would be good. Pain in your bags. Yeah. Oh, we, other games have got things like that. You know, what we, awesome. you know what we really need more than anything else? Yeah. We need... Um, one, stop fucking deciding everything that we get. Every system has 4,000 items that are unique. Please. I like the flavor of artifact bar because you can click it and it goes away. I like the flavor of anima, but you can't click it and it goes away. Which just means your bags are full of shit all the time unless you stop and dump it off. Yeah. That's fucking annoying. Um, the Proto's form synthesis, great system overall, generally speaking. Oh, yeah. Also, like, why are there like 10 different blue anima items? Just make them all the same so they can stack up. Fuck. But also, there's a bunch of items. That same with purple, bags. same with green. Uh, the one? There's no reason. Up their bags, loads of green anima, blue anima, uh, purple anima. Good. That's it. You don't need to make them all different. Right. Okay. Um, but uh, don't give them flavor, it's anima. What I think they need is the reagent bank to be about four times the size because the yeah. reagent bank is perfectly fine within one expansion. Whenever you have BFA mats that now you can't fucking sell because no one's infinite reagent bag problem solved with like make it like a collector's book kind of thing, which is like. You know, you have all the ores, all of them, and just like it goes into this slot automatically, it goes into this slot automatically, it goes into that one. All the fucking plants, it goes into this slot. All the fucking cloth, all the fucking leather. Infinite can store up to 9.99 or whatever, up to 10,000, 9,999, whatever. 9,999,999. Whatever the number is for max cap, just put it in there. Buy them, and your region bags fill them. Or if you're like me and have a bunch of uh, ghost iron and some of the lava shit from Firelands and BFA materials and Wad materials and Legion materials, because you're stupid. Um, that's basically more region bag space would solve this. I literally. Because on the last patch of every expansion, like a couple months before an expansion comes out, a month to two months, I literally throw out all of my reagents. If it's not worth gold at that point, if I can put it on the auction house and have it sell, I do it. It's not worth gold. If it's like, let's say, five silver a pop and I even have like a thousand of them, I just throw it out. Fuck it. It's not worth the 500 gold that I'm going to get. You can access stuff from it. It's like yeah, sure. inventory management, I don't think should be a part of a crafter's gameplay too much. Nope. 
unless it's well, yeah. Inventory yeah. management was only cool in Diablo 2. And even that got old pretty fast. Probably not anymore. Probably not. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, okay, another thing. Cross uh, account wide recipes? Probably no. That. This isn't our current plans for professions. Yeah, no shit. It's so unfortunate. Because I've. Uh... Maybe that's just a case of. This would take us time that meant we couldn't be bothered to play one fucking crafter or play one of this. Well, yeah, so uh, they yeah. said this isn't in our current plans as we concentrate on other aspects of the prof uh, profession system yeah. for the moment. So. Well, that's fair. If they could flick a switch, I'm sure they would. Because it doesn't make any sense otherwise. Honestly, look. This all sounds nice on paper. You know what would have sounded better than all of this bullshit? Um, we are making professions relevant, uh, with item level. You can only equip one piece, uh, per profession on you. However, no limit on professions per character. Everything that is buying on pickup is a buying on account. Done. And, uh, uh, infinite, um, reagent bag. Done. You fixed for professions. People are going to have professions on their character, all of them. Multiple characters will have all professions, or some. Definitely at least one will have all the professions. There you have content for at least a couple weeks, easily. Without doing anything, just unlocking that. Minimum couple weeks. A couple weeks just to level all the professions. Right? Make archaeology relevant again, by the way. Which, like, it wasn't my thing. But, like, at least make it relevant. Or, like, have something cool in it. Um, like the sword was pretty cool. It was just, you couldn't target it, which was like really fucking cancer, make a better archeology span system. But uh, like everything else here, first of all, more than half of it is not going to make it into the game. It's too complex. The devs don't even know how to go about it, how to actually like balance it. It's not making it into the game. It's too complicated to explain, let alone to how to make it. Simple changes. Big fucking wins. And nothing is simpler than the account-wide recipes. Not even that. Like, account-bound crafts. Um, and uh, no limits on professions. And a reagent bag probably would solve most people's hate towards profession. Yeah. Maybe there's more complexity than we uh, give credit. Uh, gathering professions. Mm -hmm. Oh. Basically saying, hey... Make all three gathering ones secondary professions. Which, uh, I, okay, right. We haven't discussed the details of gathering as much uh, with you all yet, but I will know. We are adding quite a bit of depth to gathering as well. Bro, it's fucking gathering, man. Who gives a shit? It's never fun. We are adding quite a bit of depth of gathering as well, so we're not uh, considering secondary professions. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's basically not going to change. Uh, you're gonna have probably something like inspiration for gathering to gather to have a chance to gather more uh, per uh, gathering and it's gonna be taking a slot from their crafting professions if that is because they earn their depth by a cool design they don't gameplay yeah. then they don't I, yeah um, I look personally I, I would be all for uh, more professions on one character no shit yeah uh yeah, I, I, I totally would be. Um, but... I think everyone would be because it only makes sense. Because mm -hmm. so. Since the game already doesn't allow you to play more than one character, at least let me have all the professions on one of them. But all of them. Gathering professions mm -hmm. on a single character. Then you just got bots going rampant. That's weird. So what? They're already thing going thing rampant. One, oh, sad. One, I mean, what is like. <sighs> How many profession, gathering professions do you have? Actually, technically, too. Like skinning is mm, whatever. Just mining and herbalism is already like enough for bots. Imagine you're gonna have a bot that does mining, herbalist, herbalism, and skinning, which is like usually where the herbs and the mines are. You're not gonna find like it's not a good rotation for the skinning, right? Like the mobs are just like not in that location. If anything. 
you would just want to have the bot doing rotation on, on mining and herbalism as a whole. Like herbing, mining, skinning, so it doesn't really doesn't really change anything. But yeah, that's just a that's just a bit of a joke. But no, I think um, that's true. I, I like to say, which is, uh, but I don't think it matters. The idea of you it's know, not like uh, this stops them. The details of gathering as much of the uh, all yet. I hmm. based on how they've oh. basically preempted everything. So bad. Post, yeah. But everything and like properly had time to have feedback and stuff like that from you know hey like this is like the second time they've had a big conversation about professions, with like feedback and questions and stuff and I think that's great. But the fact they haven't done this for gathering yet, and there's a couple other question marks in the expansion, I guess I think Alpha may be slightly further away than you expect. Just by like a two or three weeks. Because if they're not going to talk about gathering because they're not ready for whatever for the details, then they're not going to want to push the alpha live because then we'll get all the details without the context. So I feel like we may be a little bit further away than we'd initially ex expect. So I did see people start to say a lot of this feels very much like cool ideas they want to implement yeah. as opposed to things they have in game obviously they've got the UI for them but it feels like these are great ideas but we still haven't seen the execution so it's worth it holding on to your uh, holding on to your hats until alpha I guess anyway because every expansion have, have been full of cool ideas so far for sure well, on, on this one, I wish them luck. I think 100%, this, yeah. Like the, the, the combination of this and talents yeah. really, really could do a yeah, lot of long What the fuck are those money. talent calculators? Come on. Come on. <laughs> I want to see... Patience. I want to see what you're taking away from me. Slow ah. down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. I'll be fun. It'll be fun. Uh, you know, here's the funny thing. Hmm. If the talents just kind of feel... If they just kind of like, oh, there you go, that's it. Yeah. Done. Day one, right? You don't really think about them as much anymore. Oh I'd my still god, the mosquito bites. Piece of yeah. shit. Uh, Fucking had a full course meal over, over my body. Be gone. So even if the new system isn't like super thrilling, it's probably made the game easier to develop and therefore more sustainable and will allow them to work in fundamentals more. So it's that funny yeah. thing. Bro, I love the hopium, man. Default, I love that they're so they hopeful. Right enough that they don't have to constantly rework them. I can't wait. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's. I can't wait for the videos where they say oh, where are all the promises, Blizz. Like they do every expansion. It's a difficult thing. I can't wait for that video, man. Can't come soon enough. It's like it's clearly not happening. Yeah, more everyone wants. Why hard PvP? Oh, that's yeah. That never is gonna. That's never gonna happen. Um, masterpiece. The Dark Souls one. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, like the the amount of hopium in this, like almost all of it. Like this is not like more than half of the shit. The crit, the inspiration might happen. Like, even if it does, it's going to be either too minor or it's going to be so broken that everyone will have to have inspiration. But, like, you, you're not going to balance it properly. Uh, item quality, I don't even know what that means. Like, a higher, higher item level, I guess. But it's like, can it compete with current gear and tier? Yes or no? That's really the only thing that would matter, right? It's like... Are you gonna use it to like for alts? How easy? How accessible is gonna is the gear gonna be for Mythic Plus that you'll need it for your alts? Like it's like I don't think I think the only thing I ever bought on my alt was a weapon, uh, a higher item level weapon than the one I had on my character, just so I can kill shit faster to level up. Once I got to max level, like. I never touch anything that has to do with professions, even if when I had a maxed out, uh, I want to say I had a maxed out leather worker, either blacksmith or leather worker, pretty sure it was leather worker that was maxed out. And I never crafted anything for my demon hunter. It was so easy to get gear that is above, sorry, so easy to get gear that is above the profession item level. It wasn't, it's like, it's like, why even have professions at that point? Just to money sink into a legendary. That's all it was. 
all of this shit is not happening, man. They are not wasting all this time on this when this, these are not even the changes that people really care about when it comes to professions. There should not be a limit on professions per character at this point. There's absolutely no reason. There's like... Lore-wise, it doesn't make sense. Story-wise, it doesn't make sense. Character identity doesn't make sense. Nothing. None. There's absolutely no reason that I can think of that justifies not having more professions on one character, especially because you can just like whoop, erase from a memory, whoop, learn from one to max in one day, whoop, erase from a memory, one to max in one day. Just cost me some some gold, whatever. It's so dumb, man. It's really so dumb. There's like, man. Uh, let's see what the comments say. I like all the changes, and even if they are necessary original compared to other modes, they're not original. They're not even gonna happen. Of that, the end game crafting won't have the same issue New World had, where you could spend the metric. The fact that at a certain point you won't need inspiration is a good thing, in my honest opinion. I want these changes for the entire profession level and experience, and not just for level 60, 70. The profession limit made sense when characters took time and effort to level as well as having to skill a profession. I also don't buy the excuse that it would be too much for players to learn, seeing as you don't start with the professions. As long as my professions are a way for me to gain power on my character and fill my gold bag, I'll be happy. I love the work order concept and a lot of what, blah blah blah. Have bosses drop crafted items that can be sold in the market. Uh, let's be real. Alright, I'll just write a comment. Let's be real. Um... Uh, what else? What else? What else did I th think was necessary? Um,
All right, that's my hate-filled uh, comment right there. And all right, let's go to the next one.